Well, all strategic attention is now shifting to the seas around India and Indo-Pacific, etc., in the region. Um, and that's why your book is very timely that it focuses in that area. Now, I can't let you go unless we come to the A, the C question, which is the carrier question. Because it's carrier versus submarine uh, has been an eternal debate everywhere, but it's even more important in India where resources are so limited. So you can have three aircraft carriers, or you can have this many submarines or submarines of this quality. So does India need aircraft carriers? Well, to answer that question, Shekhar, you have to ask a prior question, which is what are India's geopolitical objectives in the wider Asian continent? If Indian geopolitical objectives are confined to the contiguous sea areas around the peninsula, then India does not need aircraft carriers. Because if you say my political interests do not extend beyond a thousand uh, kilometers from my from my uh, from my boundaries, that that will cover, that will cover Karachi and Gwadar. That's about right. But land-based air power can do the job just as well, if not better. But if you believe that India's geopolitical interests extend well beyond a thousand kilometers and that you are talking of everything from the east coast of Africa to the Southeast Asian region, if you think of that as being India's natural sphere of interest, then I do not see how you can get away without sea-based aviation in the form of an aircraft carrier, because your land-based aircraft are relatively short-legged. I mean, the longest legs uh, that any Indian aircraft currently has today is the Su-30. And the operating radius of an Su-30, fully loaded with all the equipment, weapons, all that stuff, you know, is somewhere around 750 kilometers. With refueling. Well, refueling will get you further. So on your organic fuel, you can go up to about 750 kilometers. With refueling, you could probably add a third more, maybe a half more, depending on where you refuel. But you're essentially talking of a thousand kilometers range. That's the limits of your land-based uh, aircraft. But those capabilities are not persistent because if you get out to a thousand kilometers, your time on station is not more than 15 or 20 minutes. And then you come right back, right? So if you're talking of a persistent presence beyond a thousand kilometer line around the peninsula, then you have no alternatives but to invest in aircraft carriers. Now the question becomes, what kind? Now, for a variety of reasons, mostly because India didn't have the choice, it ended up building aircraft carriers of the worst kind, which is manpower intensive platforms with very limited combat capability. And so India has put in a lot of resources into building you know, these jump jet carriers, right? So the carrier hosted the Harrier aircraft for a while. Now it's been replaced with conventional takeoff carriers like well, with the MiG-29. But these are still in very small numbers and they are again very short-ranged aircraft. So what the logic suggests, and you know, the US Navy has done studies on this now for over 40 years, that the only carrier that makes sense, both from the point of view of economics, as well as from the view of operations, is a carrier that is 65,000 tons and above. Anything that is less than 65,000 tons is an uneconomical platform because the costs of the platform far exceed the combat power that the platform deploys. Once you come to the 65,000 ton mark and above, your combat power increases dramatically, your sustainability increases dramatically, and you can do many more useful things with the carrier of that size. Now, the Indian Navy is fighting really hard for what they call IAC-3, which is the third carrier that they want to build, which would be somewhere in the region of 65,000. 
tons. And that is really the magic number in the kink of the curve. Because once you get to that 65,000 ton ship, you can have an air wing of anywhere between 40 and 50 airplanes, which is a sizable number, not as big as a US aircraft carrier, which has about 80 plus airplanes, but still good enough for the purposes that you know India is applying itself to. So the real decisions to my mind are twofold. First, what are your geopolitical interests? Define that in geographic terms. If I may interrupt, these could be more capable planes than, than big 29s. Oh, I would think so. In fact, I think my impression is that the Indian Navy wants to get rid of the MiG-29 as fast as they can because they are horrendous from the point of view of maintenance. Uh, the, their, the availability, the mission availability of a MiG-29 is really dismal. Uh, it has very short legs, uh, certainly compared to the SU-30s that will be on Chinese carriers and compared to any airplane on, on you know, an American or a French carrier. And it has a relatively uh, small weapons load. So on multiple counts, I think the MiG-29 is really part of India's, the Indian Navy's past history. It's not, it's not the airplane for the future. Uh, and, you know, they're looking right now, in fact, at a replacement. And I believe they have looked at both the Rafale and the F-18s as possible replacements of the MiG-29. But, but that's absolutely right. Irrespective of what carrier you have, uh, India is looking for a replacement aircraft. But the big question that I suspect is lying behind you know, the question you asked me, is whether India ought to make the investment in the IAC-3 and standardize on a large deck carrier of about 65,000 tons. And my view is you answer that question only by clarity about your geopolitical interests. And once you have clarity on that question, then the issue of the carrier answers itself. Yeah, so don't, don't build it as a status symbol. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, it's a horrendous way to waste money if all you're looking for is status. Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very expensive. And uh, for a limited fleet, uh, you have to put a lot of tamjam around it to protect it. Then you have to have a real big task force. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is why, you know, the size of the carrier air wing and the quality of the carrier air wing becomes so critical. Yeah. Uh, and so these are the decisions that I think Indian policymakers are grappling with, you know, at the moment.